In this video, we're going to look at quadratic equations with undetermined coefficients. So I'll explain what that means in a moment, but let's start by considering some of the theory we're going to need to help us tackle this type of problem. And I should start by saying this is not quite entry level for quadratic equations. So if you're just starting out with quadratic equations, maybe check out an introductory video first and then come back into this class when you're ready. Although that said, if you are just starting out, you'll see this type of problem fairly soon anyway. So you might just want to follow along because before long you will be presented with this type of question. So let's start with the theory. I don't want to go too far into the theory. I don't want to get too bogged down. I want to focus on these example problems, but hopefully this will be review anyway. But remember that a general quadratic equation, the general form looks like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And the a, b and c values are just some real numbers. And the a values got to be non-zero. So you've got to preserve the x squared term although the, the x term and the number term can disappear or they can both disappear as long as you've still got an x squared term then it's still a quadratic equation. That's what defines the quadratic equation, the presence of the x squared term. So these example problems all have an x squared term. So an, an actual quadratic equation might be something like say 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 equals 0. But in the general form, we represent these coefficients, the 2, the 5, and the minus 7 is a, b, and c. One important property feature of the quadratic equation is its discriminant. So the discriminant allows us to discriminate between three possible types of solution. The solutions for a quadratic equation are sometimes also called the roots. So you'll see roots and solutions used kind of interchangeably. So the discriminant allows us to determine whether the quadratic equation is going to have zero solutions or roots or one solution or two solutions in the real numbers. We're limiting this discussion to the real numbers. You can also get complex or imaginary number solutions for quadratic equations, but we're not including those in this class today. So the discriminant will tell us whether our quadratic equation has got zero, one or two solutions. And the discriminant is defined as b squared minus 4ac. So in my example here, the a value is 2, the b value is 5, and the c value is negative 7. I would just plug those numbers into this uh, quantity, b squared minus 4ac, work out what I get as some numerical value. And if that numerical value is greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero, then that tells me which of those three possible scenarios I'm dealing with. And the way it works, again, hopefully this is review, if the discriminant is greater than zero, so a positive number, that tells us that the original quadratic equation has got two solutions or two roots. If the discriminant is equal to zero, the quadratic equation has got one solution or one root in the real numbers. And if the discriminant is negative, in other words, less than zero, then the original quadratic equation does not have any solutions or zero solutions or roots in the real numbers. Although in this scenario, we'd have complex roots, so imaginary number uh, solutions. So this is the theory we need, in particular this part here. And the important thing to draw your attention to is that if you know the discriminant, for example, is greater than zero, positive, that implies that you've got two solutions or two roots, but that also goes backwards. And that's key for us in tackling these problems. If you're already told that your quadratic equation has two roots, then that implies that the discriminant is greater than zero. Likewise, if you know your quadratic equation's only got one root or one solution, that would imply the discriminant has to be equal to zero. So these rules, as is true in a lot of mathematics, go both ways. And we're gonna use them predominantly going right to left rather than left to right. So that's all the theory. Let's move on and tackle these problems. So in this problem type, you're going to be given a quadratic equation, but it's going to have what's called an undetermined coefficient. Usually the letter K can be any letter, but it's not likely to be A, B, and C. It's going to be some other letter. And this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to solve for the K value or whatever the letter is, the undetermined coefficient. So we're going to be given the quadratic equation, but we're also going to be given information about the roots or the solution. So for this one here, let's say that this guy has got one real root. So you would need to be given that in the question, okay? So one real root. By the way, one real root is sometimes written as equal roots, okay? So if you ever see the term equal roots, you can interpret that to mean one real root, meaning that you're in this scenario here. 
One easy way to remember that, if it's equal roots, the discriminant is equal to zero, but the equal here doesn't mean equal zero. It just happens to be that those two are connected. Okay, so let's imagine that we've got this quadratic and we've got one real root. Let's start by defining explicitly our A, B, and C values. It's good practice to actually write these down. So the A value, remember, goes in front of the X squared. There's no number here, but secretly there's a one in there. So we're gonna say that the A value equals one. The B value goes in front of the X term. It's a coefficient of the X term, which in our case is negative K. Be careful to get the signs in there as well. So you need to pick up the negative. So it's negative K, not just K. And the C value is just tagged on the end and the C value is 16. Okay, so we've explicitly written those down. Now we're gonna be working with our discriminants. So let's go ahead and make the discriminant. So B squared minus four AC. And just basically fill in your A, B, and C, substitute in those values. So the B value is negative K, so it's negative K all square. So you need to be careful about using a bracket for that. Really, really common mistake is for students just to write minus K squared, which is not the same as minus K all squared. So be ultra careful minus four times the A value, which is one, and the C value, which is 16. There's the, you could write in a little multiply signs here or dots. I like to use brackets just to imply multiplication. So that's our discriminant values substituted in. Negative K all squared is positive K squared. Four times one times 16 is 64. So that's us filled in, if you like the values to give us our discriminant and we've simplified it as far as we can. Now at this point we've got to go back to the question and say right well we were told that it's one real root. One real root implies a discriminant which is this thing here is equal to zero. So you can go ahead and just now set that equal to zero. That then gives you an equation to solve to get the k value. Before you set that equal to zero some teachers will recommend and this is good practice to maybe write a line of work in saying, stating why you're setting equal to zero. So you might want to write in something like, since, there, since the equation has one real root, b squared minus 4ac or the discriminant is equal to zero. I'm not writing that in purely because I'm, well, partly I'm being lazy and partly I'm going to run out of board space, but um, it is good practice to do that. So we've set that up equal to zero. Now we just need to solve it. There's various ways we could do this. We could, for example, take the 64 the minus 64 to the other side like that, and then square root in both sides, and you would get k comes out to be plus and minus eight. Remember when you square root, you get both the positive and the negative solution. So the solution to this little equation is plus or minus eight. Another option here would be to factorize this. It's a difference of two squares. That would go into two brackets and that would make it clearer that you get the plus and the minus eight uh, solution. Notice as well that in this problem, we started off with a quadratic equation and the discriminant part itself, this part also turned into a quadratic equation. That can be a little confusing for students sometimes, but this quadratic and, these, and this quadratic are not connected other than the fact that it's a discriminant of that one. So it just happens to be that they're both quadratic equations. So don't be put off by that. Right, let's scoot straight on to the next one. Uh, so just going through the same process. So defining your A, B and C values. So A is one, B value is negative two K. So make sure you get all of that in there. And the C value in this case is five K. So it's quite common and perfectly fine and acceptable for two of these, even three of them to have the K in and you'll see that quite often. So it's okay for there to be a K in here and a K in here or a K here and a K here. In this case, we'll need one K in our A, B and C values here. We've got two, it doesn't matter, both are fine. So again, making our discriminant B squared minus four AC. So that's gonna be minus two K all squared minus four times the A value, which is one times the C value, which is five K. And let's work this problem the same as a previous one where we're gonna assume that this quadratic equation has got one solution or one root, one real root. And we know that one real root implies a discriminant again is equal to zero. This is the easiest case by the way, because it's easier to work an equation like we had here and like we're gonna have here rather than an in equation as you would get with these cases here, which we're gonna get for this problem over here. You need to be able to work all three, but definitely this one is the, is the easiest uh, generally. So taking this forward, negative two K all squared, well that's negative two K times negative two K, which gives you positive four K squared, four times one times five K, well that's minus 20 K and again, because we've got one real root, the discriminant has to be equal to zero. So you might just want to write in a line of work in there, stating that 
because it's one real root, the discriminant is equal to zero before you set it equal to zero. Just to save a bit of board space, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it equal to zero. And now we're at this stage again. Now we've got an equation to solve. Again, this one's turned into a quadratic equation. It doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes these are linear equations. Whatever kind of equation you get, you've got to solve it anyway. So it is what it is. And in this case, we can solve by factorizing. So I'm gonna pull out a common factor of 4k. Inside my bracket, I would then have k minus five equals zero. Splitting this off into two little mini equations, we get 4k equals zero, and we get k minus five equals zero. This one solves to give us k equals zero, so not a very exciting solution. And this one gives us k equals five. So usually in these questions, in this question type, if you get a zero solution, you would discard it. Um, and that's because if you imagine taking that k, subbing it back in here to the original equation, if k is zero, then this becomes zero, that becomes zero, and the equation just becomes x squared equals zero, which is kind of trivial. It trivializes a solution, so we normally knock that off. And sometimes in the question, they'll clarify by saying something like one real root and k has to be strictly greater than zero, which then means that although your working gives you that solution, you can eliminate it so you don't actually include it and you just stick with the other solution. So sometimes that'll happen, sometimes not. It depends on the question. Okay, so that's two fairly similar, similar examples. Let's look at a third case. So not a million miles away from these two. I mean, the process is fairly similar. It's just that this time we're gonna deal with a quadratic equation with two real roots. So we're gonna to have to adjust uh, how we deal with the discriminant. Two real roots implies the discriminant is greater than zero. So we're gonna be working with this in equation this time, but we're gonna start in the same way. We'll identify our A value, which is three. Our B value is negative four. Little, gotta be a little careful with the C value here. A lot of students will write down the C value as one because they're used to seeing a number as a C value. A lot of students will write down the C value as K because they're used to the very end term in this expression being the c value, but actually the c value is all of one plus k. And the better way to remember it is that once you've identified your a value and your b value, sort of going left or right, then everything else on the end is the c value. Sometimes the c value will have more than two terms. It might have a whole bunch of terms um, in particular problems, but quite often it has two terms. So the C value here would be all of that, one plus K. So watch out for that one, that's a big sticking point. It causes a lot of problems. Okay, so we've got our A, B and C. So we can go ahead and put them into our discriminant. So B squared minus four AC. So it's gonna be minus four all squared minus four times A, which is three times one plus K. So we can see as well, in this problem, it's also more tricky than the, than the previous two because we've got slightly more difficult expression. It's not hugely difficult, but you've got to be more careful than the fairly easy numbers that we had to work with over here. So taking this forward, negative four all squared is 16. You might want to take two lines of work in to do this. It's up to you. So four times three is 12. So you could just go minus 12 and then leave your bracket, or you could multiply it all out in one go. But if you're doing that, be really careful. It's easy to make mistakes. So taking this forward by multiplying the bracket, minus 12 times one is minus 12, minus 12 times positive k is minus 12k. And at this point, again, you might want to, well, actually let's take another line to tidy this up because we can do 16 minus 12 to give us four minus 12k. And then you might want to refer to your root information. This is called the nature of the roots. You might want to say, right, since there are two real roots, then b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. And you would just put that in here as basically a line of text. Once you've done that, you can then, you've sort of justified why you're setting it greater than zero. So you can now say four minus 12k is greater than zero. And now we've just got this linear inequation to solve. Various ways you can do this, but probably the neatest is to get rid of the negative by setting up like that. Divide both sides by 12, and you're gonna get 12, uh, sorry, four over 12 is greater than k. Simplifying this by dividing top and bottom by four, and you get one over three is greater than k. And we would usually spin that around to say k has to be less than one third. And that is basically the solution. So in a problem like this, where you don't have an equal value, k equals five or k equals eight, 
where we've got k greater than or k less than, the question might give you a clue because the question might be stated not find the value of k like this one, or in this one it would be stated values, plural, and it's really important to look out for these keys, value, values, this would probably say state the range of values because k here is not a value, k is infinitely many values, any value that's less than one third will satisfy the criteria here. And what is that criteria? Well, the criteria is that if k is any value less than one third, if you put that value in there, then the equation will have two real roots. So that's what we're saying here. k less than one third substituted in there gives you an equation which has two real roots. And not just for one value of k, but for a whole set of values, infinitely many values. So that's a few little tips there about the language of the question that might help you out. So really common question type, which if you're starting quadratic equations, you won't see immediately, but you will see within two or three weeks of working with quadratic equations. So you're gonna see these uh, fairly soon. So I hope that this instruction helps. If you've got any questions or comments, then just leave them in the box below.